Hey guys, hope you had a great Labor Day. This is a market report for the week of September the 8th, 2020. The market today, what can I tell you? What's happening and what should we keep an eye on? Well, there's quite a few things to keep an eye on, so I'll get there in just a second, but let me tell you where the market pricing is right now, and uh, we'll go from there. Super Colossal, eight, fairly firm. Colossal, seven and a half to eight, closer to seven and a half. Jumbos are six and a half to seven, uh, and it's kind of a soft seven at the moment. Mediums are a seven to eight. There's quite a bit of spread there. Um, and uh, there's a lot of those onions going into package uh, business as well, into three pounders for the food box program and for retail. Those numbers are off the charts. So we're gonna call it mostly seven and a half. Whites are, well, the straight load volume on whites would have been nine ten even yesterday. Uh, even the start of today, I would say it is 10. I bet it's 11 by tomorrow, and I bet we see possibly $12 by the end of the week. And why is that? Mexico is in buying. Mexico doesn't have the supply that they need, and uh, they are looking for some help. And right now, whites are cheap enough that they can buy them. So I'd say that's about the number. Reds, you're going to see six to seven on both sizes. And uh, I don't see that changing unless the whites get high enough that the switchover happens from Mexi for, the, for the Mexican buyers from whites to reds. Their order of preference is number one, white, number two, red, number three, yellow. So unless the pricing is too high, and I think that number's around 12 to $14 in my mind, um, unless the number's above 12 or $14 on whites, they're not going to buy reds, and unless the number on reds is above 12 to $14, they're not going to switch to yellows, and that's generally the case. So what can we expect? Well, first of all, let's talk about harvest in the Northwest. We are just barely getting started with storage crop. In fact, we haven't even started with storage crop. Zero uh, percent of the storage crop is in, at least in the Idaho, Oregon area. Well, that's not true. I bet maybe two or three percent is in. Um, in Washington, that number is probably double what ours is. They usually get started before we do, and that will continue to be the case. So the risk that remains is, will we get harvested? I'm going to assume that we do, okay? Let's not talk about whether we're going to get harvested or not. We're going to assume that we do. What do we need to keep an eye on? Well, the percentage of cedars is much higher than normal, which means our coal rate is higher than normal. Um, I think it also slows down packaging. I think it, on the outlook, keeps prices higher for the storage season. I also think that demand coming in from south of the border is going to have an impact on pricing for all three colors. The USDA food box program is also having its impact on the smaller sizes. And the reduced amount of shipments coming from Canada, especially the subsidized discounted prices, is also having its impact on the market. So overall, I'm relatively bullish, and I would have been as bearish as they come had you talked to me and I was honest with you six weeks ago. I, I couldn't have been more bearish on the market, but I think the reduced plantings in Mexico, the circumstances happening in Canada, and the overall supply, and the beginning of the season and the pricing maintaining what it has up until now, um, are very good indicators of a relatively strong onion market. Trucking is another thing that you need to consider. So it's going to be a real long-winded uh, report, but I think it's important to talk about trucking. Pricing is way higher. Lots of people have been asking me why pricing is so much higher right now than what it has been uh, you know, in the last few months and especially compared to what it was last year. And the answer is simple, Cold Connect. Cold Connect, which used to be Rail X, has been shut down. Those are hundreds and hundreds of loads that are not being covered by the Union Pacific Railroad in any format. And that is resulting in uh, higher prices across the board, especially when it comes to refrigerated freight. So as long as we can ship flatbeds and men vans, we're going to be okay. But when that demand shifts, when the situation changes, and we have to ship 
only on refrigerated trucks. Watch out. Any numbers that are in place, I think, are going to be out the window really quickly. And we're going to have a really hard time keeping up with the reality of that situation. Those are my two cents. Again, hope you had a great Labor Day. Glad uh, to take care of you. I'm glad to share some information with you. We'll talk to you later.